made it ashore. I'm in Cuba. Security looks lighter than I thought. I wonder where Paz is. It's dark, but there are soldiers everywhere. Lots of choppers coming and going. Those lights are so bright. Time to get moving. I got close to the fence to see if I could spot her. They had a guard posted, so I got out of there. Guess security's not so light after all. I'm coming, past. I'm okay. I'm... I'm okay. I think I found her! It's gotta be past! my recorder. At least whoever finds this will know what happened. <laughs> They're holding others here too. Still no sign of pass. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Thank you. 
looks weak. We need her alive. Yes, sir. Paz! Huh? You're back early today. Early? And the sun is still up. Yes? Let us not do this, okay? Huh? I do not think I want to talk to you. But I came here to... Just be quiet. Uh -huh. Or I'll scream. What the... I don't get it. On your feet. Okay. Take him back to his cage. What did I do? Begite, Kakatratseva. Have it back. We've decided to let her go. So she talked. Told her she should have just gotten it over with. She's going back to your boss. But only her. Huh? Those were the terms. She said to leave you here. I suppose she doesn't much care for you anymore. That bitch! Now, you've got quite a problem on your hands. When she gets back, what will she say? That you talked? Sold out your comrades? Your family? You're finished. 
mean I... I can't go home. There's very little I can do for you. And I still have need of your services. Huh? You're going to call your boss for help. We'll make a recording, play it across public frequency bands. To bring him here? <sighs> yeah, right. Do you expect me to trust you? I'll never help you! Perhaps, but if you did, I wouldn't mind looking the other way if he did come for you. Take some guards off duty, let you quietly slip away. But, you wouldn't want the girl leaving here alive. She'd have to be eliminated before he came. There's no other way. I'll leave you to think it over. Chico, growing up means choosing how you're going to live your life. You've done your part. You told us plenty. You've known the pain of ages. And even now you think, as any person would, that this can't be happening. Is it education? Morals? Faith? Just the imprint of a lifetime of stories? Face to face with oblivion, which is where you are, and you still think that help is coming. The world you were born into is made to save you. Isn't that right? Of course it is. Everyone knows that. Until your last breath, you know it. Without the slightest chance or reason left to them, humans are capable of hope. I'm no different. But for one thing, when my time came calling, I didn't die. My family died, my country died, but they didn't take me with them. All hell took from me was this skin, this outer peel that marked me human. My village had an oilseed field and a fine factory. Every day my friends and I would see our parents at work in that factory. That's all I had, all the world I knew. Then one day, aircraft came droning in from some far off sky. The factory was bombed. Some spies had told them we were making weapons. The building burned. We tried to flee outside. The crowd blocked the exit. The crowd of people. Hot. So hot. I tried to push through their legs and get ahead, but a boot in my stomach put me on the ground. The smoke of them burning filled me up. I heard my name called, but not for long. At the infirmary they carried me to, 
A nurse in the corridor saw me and remarked, as if it happened every day, they should let the poor thing die. Those are the only words of my mother tongue I remember. It was the language of my village. Until foreign troops invaded, then the last identity I had left, the words I spoke, were pulled from me. My skin would never feel anything again. This face would be burned again, in torture, at foreign hands. But I, I still writhe in that burning factory, doused in scalding rapeseed oil. That's all I have to feel, that pain. All I have to remind me I exist here. <laughs> Those spies reported well. We made weapons, all right. As cartloads of rifles came in from the battlefields, we fixed them up and sent them back out. So our country could win. Or rather, so that little world we knew could continue. I came to realize I mustn't die. I'm their last hope. All those who perished and left me here. I have to accomplish something. If I don't, their will will be swept out of this world. <laughs> So, do you see me now? Tell me, what do you see? Hmm? You have eyes. What do your eyes see? <laughs> yes, that's right. You see a skull face. You see me. This skull is who I am. My mark, my proof of humanity. I have no country, no language, I have no face. But I haven't lost my skull. So I told myself, the pain and effort that keep me alive will never know relief, never bear fruit, never be repaid. I know that. But I told myself to focus on some hope, a non-existent hope, to guide me through this burning world. A hope. Call it a dream. A melancholic delusion. As the pressures within me stretch me to bursting, and I force myself not to cry out, though the words I thought were carved into me are gone, and all I knew is dead. <laughs> I know how you feel. I've felt that. So show me that I'm not the only one. That you too can return to this world for revenge. Do you see me? Don't die. Don't die! This is a one-man infiltration mission, boss. Equipment is the bare essentials. Anything else will be OSP. The target location is a prison camp on a U.S. military base. Those Marines have the place locked down tight. Your only backup will be one extraction chopper. We can't send anything else. You won't need to. Again, this is infiltration, a sneaking mission. Your number one priority is remaining undetected. Use discretion before engaging any guards you encounter. Be mindful of their sensory perceptions, sight, sound, smell, and pain. Fortunately, these atmospheric conditions will continue until dawn. That should provide you with some cover. At least the weather's on my side. Your mission objective is to rescue Chico and Paz. According to Chico, 
They're both being held at an old prison facility. Recon from the intel unit supports this, so it's safe to assume that's where they are. Once you've gotten them to the RV, call in the extraction chopper. I'll monitor the situation and offer guidance from here. But you'll be the one in the field. How you handle this mission is entirely up to you, boss. Snake, yesterday we received official communication from the IAEA. It says, it has come to our attention that your organization recently purchased nuclear fuel from Uzbekistan authorities. We request permission to inspect your facilities. What a load of bullshit. Yeah, they're after Metal Gear Zeke's nuclear warhead. I'm betting this is payback from Cypher after Paz's leak. Using the UN. There's no telling how much influence they have. But the IAEA can only do inspections in countries that are party to the NPT. And we're not a country. Exactly. We haven't signed a safeguards agreement with the IAEA over peaceful nuclear use, and we're not obligated to report any nuclear material we have, nor information about any nuclear facilities. The IAEA has no authority to inspect us. But despite all that... That nuke's our last line of defense. We don't want to announce we have it until the world is preparing to wipe us off the map. Until then, we let everyone think we're just a private army with conventional firepower. What's Huey's take? that the problem's how to hide the nuke in Metal Gear. But I gotta tell you, he was all for it. I see. But there's no way we can have the IAEA poking around here. So what do we do? Ignore them? Send them an official letter of refusal. Say that we're a private organization and we've done nothing to attract the suspicion. You got it. We finished Zeke's waterproofing reinforcement yesterday. The day after tomorrow, we'll be done installing the main depth control tank, the compressed air tank, and the attitude control propeller pod. Huey. If the underwater test goes well, next week we'll try the 300-foot seabed depth. Drop the act, Huey. How did we end up agreeing to the nuclear inspection? Because after you sent that letter, I told them. After careful reconsideration, we agree to your request. And frankly, we should be inspected. This is our chance. If they come and go without discovering the nuke, we can tell the world we're clean. Of course, it's risky, and we'll have to make sure everything's perfect, but it'll be worth it. Huey, can they do an inspection without going through the Board of Governors? We contacted the IAEA's admin branch, and they said there's no record of us being brought up at any of the Board's meetings. I'd say probably a preliminary inspection to determine whether we should be referred to the Board. So it's bound to be a small inspection team, and they won't be here that long. Don't worry. Leave everything to me. Has the media gotten wind of this? Yeah. Two major Western networks want to do stories on us. I planned on saying yes. What? You want to broadcast this place to the world? That's why I agreed to the inspection. This is a golden opportunity. We can use the media to prove to the world we don't have a nuke. Besides, even if we said no, it would just be delaying the inevitable. Ugh, Kaz, our hands are tied now. Start getting the place ready. Thanks, boss. Don't get the wrong idea. You've set it up so that any more changes of heart will arouse suspicion, that's all. <sighs> Zeke stays, but we'll have to move all other AFVs to shore. Any potential troublemakers can go with them for some mandatory R&R. &R. Sound good, boss? Just do it. About the inspection, what do we tell the men? The truth. What else? The one thing we don't need to worry about is anyone here spilling the beans about Zeke. Good point. What about the Sandinistas? There's still quite a few of them left on the base. I hate to say it, but it won't look good having Soviet bloc personnel here. The problem is, moving a group that size in a hurry would look even worse. <sighs> At least Amanda's on assignment in Cuba. They'd recognize her. She should stay put for now. All civilians, save Huey, will have to return to their countries. Even your Parisian? Of course. We'll get her whatever paper she needs. Dr. Strangelove's departure came at a perfect time. The less Zeke-related staff here, the better. Wait, she left? That's right. You were away on a mission. She left last week. There's nothing cooking in AI weapons research, and Zeke is complete. There was really no reason for her to hang around. I'm surprised Huey let her go that easy. Yeah, his crush on Strangelove was never much of a secret, huh? He followed her everywhere while Zeke was in development. Boy, would she get pissed. But he does have a lot on his mind right now. 
I've got bigger issues to deal with. That's what he said. That's the spirit, Huey. Ten days ago, we got reports that Poss was still alive. She survived. She was rescued by a Belizean fisherman who found her drifting in the Caribbean. So what's the plan? Silence her before we're compromised? No. I've got something else in mind. Our friends at Cypher suspect Poss could be a double agent. She's being held for interrogation at a camp on the southern tip of Cuba. Black site. Nice. A slice of American pie on communist soil and out of U.S. legal jurisdiction. The upcoming inspection of Mother Base has to be connected somehow. The timing's too perfect. The U.N.'s nuclear inspection. My guess is they're trying to corroborate Poss's leak. We're an army without a nation. Word of our capabilities gets out, and we'll have the whole world out to shut us down. Having an American private intelligence agency involved is bad news. Cypher's the ones who sent Poss to us in the first place. She knows their true nature. Right. Poss is our only link to Cypher. If she's still alive, we need her on our side. If not us, who else is gonna rescue that bitch? When do we do it? The inspection comes first. We'll deal with us afterwards. Do the men know? Word has started to spread. The information came from Cuba through Amanda. One of the base personnel used to belong to El Frente. I'll tell everyone we don't concern ourselves with the survival of enemy spies. We need them focused on the inspection. And if we get her back here and she isn't cooperative, there's still plenty of room for her in the ocean. Works for me. What about Chico? He had a chance to stop Paz from hijacking Zeke and he blew it. He's carried that guilt ever since. Kid really did care about her. Chico, it's hard to say how he'll react. Have Amanda call him out to Cuba. He shouldn't be here right now. Good idea. They haven't seen each other in a while. Little time with Big Sis and he'll forget all about you know who. What? Still no sign of Chico? What's going on? It's Amanda in Cuba. Our resupply package arrived, but Chico wasn't with it. Relax, Amanda. I'm sure he's just exploring Havana or something. First time in the big city. Could have gotten carried away. Koss, wait. The boat Chico was on, did it stop anywhere before it got to Havana? Yeah, it had to refuel at Santiago de Cuba. You don't think... Oh, shit. You gotta be kidding me. He does this now? It's 60 miles from Santiago to the prison camp. Chico used to cross the mountains with the older Sandinistas like it was nothing. He'll make that in three days. Still, even if he does find his way there... You know how reckless he can be. Chico thinks we've abandoned Paz. That's why he's doing this. We'll start by having the intel detachment in Cuba look for him. We can't let him be captured. Chico talks, he could blow the new cover up. We can't hold off until the inspection's over. When can we be ready? It'll take at least 16 hours to confirm the flight path and prep a bird. The intel unit has started reconning the area. Sounds like I'll have to miss the inspection. Boss, we'll just have to send someone else to get them out. No. I'll go. Yeah. Chico and Paz would only take orders from you anyway. We can't go taking on those Marines at the base head on. It's gotta be off the radar. And it's got to be you. Hold down the fort, Koss. Snake, you can forget about civil liberties where you're headed. God only knows what they'd do to you if you got caught. Do not let that happen. The Cubans leased the land to the U.S. as a gesture for helping them gain independence from Spain. The deal remains in effect until both countries agree to dissolve it or the U.S. abandons the land. That's why America still operates the base even after La Revolución. Problem is, it's leased land. Meaning it isn't American soil, so the U.S. Constitution doesn't apply there. That allows them to withhold its civil rights protections. Yeah, that's Uncle Sam's excuse. The area was originally only for detaining refugees from countries like Cuba and Haiti. But a few years ago, the CIA and its likes started using it as a black site. Enemies of the state are renditioned there and subjected to extreme forms of interrogation. You can bet Cypher had a hand in that. 
As you'd expect, American and other Western human rights organizations aren't allowed anywhere near the place. What happens there disappears down the memory hole. Who knows what they're doing to Chico and Paz? I'd like to interrogate her ourselves. But if worse comes to worst, make sure she's dead. Chico, on the other hand, we have to bring back. Fast. He knows too much about us. Cos. The area is surrounded by mines placed by both the U.S. and Cuba, making escape on foot impossible. You're heading into the lion's den, Snake. Don't take this one lightly. Come back in one piece. Yeah. I heard about Paz's tapes. Yeah. Why do you think she'd leave him behind? And that diary? Whatever it was, her commitment was wavering. That much is clear. So she was leaving clues to help us? No way to know for sure. And the ocean's not giving her back. November 4th, 1974. At the outskirts of Barranquilla, Colombia. Contact with Big Boss successful. Zadornov posed as my professor, but Big Boss took one look and knew he was KGB. However, he does not seem to suspect me. To him, I am just a peace-loving student, and another victim of the CIA. We asked him to drive the CIA out of Costa Rica. To him, this means betraying his country. His forces are smaller than anticipated. They drift from place to place with nowhere to call home. That provided us an opportunity, so we seized it. Zdornov offered them a plant off the Costa Rican coast to use as a base. As expected, Miller jumped at the chance. Although initially reluctant, Big Boss came around when Zadornov played him the tape. All because the voice on it sounded like his mentor, the boss. Naked Snake, the man who once saved the world from the brink of nuclear war. I awarded the title of Big Boss for his service. He later became a mercenary, abandoning both his title and his country. To him, that honor was steeped in the blood of the boss the mentor he was forced to eliminate. Exceptionally charismatic, he possesses unparalleled combat and intelligence gathering abilities. His only discernible weakness is... her. This operation hinges on how effectively we can exploit that. Kazuhira Miller is Big Boss's lieutenant. Half Japanese, half American. He once served in Japan's Self-Defense Force. Though he and Snake first met as enemies, they discovered a common bond and together built their private army, with Miller directing business and administrative affairs. He comes off as shallow, but his true intent is hard to read. I must be careful. All that is clear is his infatuation with Big Boss. With East and West fighting over its control, Central America is now the most contested region on Earth. CIA Central American Station Chief Coldman has developed Peace Walker, a fully AI-automated, fail-deadly nuclear launch system with which he aims to reignite the Cold War. Snake's new objective in Costa Rica is to prevent that. The doorknobs, or should I say, the KGB's plan is to play the two sides against each other turning the entire region red. Not one of the three parties realize they're all just pawns in Cypher's hands. Cypher watches all. Mother Base has developed rapidly since being established in the Caribbean Sea. They recruit more personnel daily, and already their mercenary services are turning a profit. Big Boss's leadership and charisma, and Miller's business acumen drive this impressive growth. Furthermore, joining forces with a faction of the FSLN has expanded their power even more. They have even commenced their own weapons development program. All is proceeding according to Cypher's will. I could not be more pleased. Snake's pursuit of Peace Walker led him to an AI modeled after the boss's thought patterns. It was incomplete, but, somewhat ironically, making contact with Snake was the necessary finishing touch. 
Meanwhile, the scientist behind Peace Walker's locomotive control, Huey, defected to Snake's army. His presence has greatly accelerated weapons development at Mother Base. I failed to anticipate Coldman's madness, but nuclear war was averted. However, this was only after the boss AI on board Peace Walker sank itself to the bottom of the lake in what could be likened to suicide. The boss laid down her gun, choosing to sing for peace instead, and Snake, himself a gun, parted ways with her. In doing so, he reclaimed the title he once abandoned. He is Big Boss. Zadornov has been detained. Since this leaves my cover identity without a guardian, the Mother Base staff has taken me in. I am now better placed than ever to monitor their internal affairs. Everything continues to unfold according to plan. The developer of the boss AI, Dr. Strangelove, has also come to Mother Base. With her and Huey's expertise, they can now develop a weapon capable of matching Peace Walker. Development on the bipedal weapon is now complete. They call it Metal Gear Zeke. It stands there like some sort of mystical guardian. This soldiers gaze on it with pride and reverence. Big Boss has elected to arm it with a nuclear weapon. As an army without a nation, they seem to feel the need for a deterrent against whatever the world might pit against them. It is a dangerous gambit. Why do such a thing? Their nuclear strategy differs from the Americans and the Soviet Union. The superpowers deter attack by revealing their nuclear arsenals to one another. Snake and his men know that if they were to go public with this, the whole world would unite against them. Business would dry up overnight. So they do not plan on revealing the nuke until necessary. This ace in the whole approach is their idea of a nuclear strategy. Wielding a deterrent all the while unable to reveal its existence. I wonder if Snake sees how vulnerable this makes them. Yes. Hijack Zeke? Yes, I did indicate that to be our leverage. But I cannot imagine his agreeing to that now. But did you not raise them to safeguard your governance without borders? No, no. I have not forgotten. Cypher watches all. Yes, things are proceeding, but modifying Zeke has not proven easy. I am using Zadornov to buy some time. No, I have not forgotten what you said. However, well, forgive me for asking, but this is you I am speaking to, isn't it, Cypher? I must. I will fight, Big Boss. The world must be ruled by a single will. To defy Cypher is a fate worse than death. 